couple of weeks ago, I saw a clip on Twitter of a player cheating so blatantly and so poorly in terms of disguising it, I couldn't believe my eyes. That's right, today's cheater is not high stakes. They didn't win huge amounts of money. Nobody died. They aren't one of the worst magic cheaters for that reason. They're just terrible at it. Like, really bad at cheating. Cheating is bad anyway, hashtag moral disclaimer, but this person is terrible at cheating. A local player, a trusted part of the community, and a former judge decided to just blatantly cheat to what amounts to a midweek FNM and low stakes, almost non stakes friendly tournament night at a store. And they did this all with a camera above watching them. A brazen mask off moment that ended up showing their local community that not only are they a cheater, but they're also really shit at it. It boggles my mind. But let's take a quick look at it because it's actually an example of a cheat I've talked about in a video before. So I want to mention that, highlight that, and talk about how you can avoid this yourself. Also, they cheat a little bit in a way that you might do yourself if you've never been talked to about it. Let Papa Kenobi talk to you. This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. So if you're looking to pick up sealed product or singles from the newly released, hotly anticipated March of the Machines, or maybe even Aftermath that's coming with their tiny little boosters, use the code Kenobi to get 5% off your order, or hit the link in the description below to help support the show. So let's take a look at the clip and see if you can spot the cheat. This is the long clip provided by, or at least I found it on Twitch by Hapless Co, a local content creator who attempts to live stream events uh, and event nights from their local store, The Manor Lounge. Shout out to people like this giving us paper content to watch and inadvertently catch cheaters. For those of you that don't understand what's happening here, this is sideboarding. It's when in a game of best of three, after game one, players are allowed to modify their decks using the 15 card sideboard that they've brought with them. That's what we can see both players doing here, both Alex and Julian. At present time, as you can see from the pips at the bottom, Julian here has beaten Alex and they're discussing the matchup as they decide what to bring in and take out in this Lotus Field combo versus blue black control matchup. I guess cutting removal is probably a good first step, but like, yeah, <laughs> like, for most of it. At the very least. Yeah. I have just, just like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do here. This whole matchup is like, I gen, I, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do at any point. It's tricky, yeah. Once sideboarding is complete, they begin to shuffle, and this is where you need to look closely. Can you spot what Alex is doing with their shuffling and their deck? looking through your deck as you add your sideboard cards to choose what you take out as you add sideboard cards, remove main deck cards, is completely normal. Here we start to see the main way in which Alex is cheating. They are selecting cards, they are seeing in their deck that they want to draw and put them to the top of their deck. Here we see a bit more card selection to the top and perhaps spreading lands out in the deck as well. Just get that double whammy of mana weaving and shuffle cheating. Now, in spite of the stream freezing a little bit, we start to see this awkwardness with Alex's shuffling, where they're trying to keep particular cards to the top of the deck. So they're going carefully and stumbling over it visibly, whilst on camera, I am hasten to add, as they keep those cards at the top of the deck. And this is my favorite part, the obvious <coughs> finger dividing the cards they want to keep at the top on the rest of the shuffling is very funny. first couple of watchbacks, I thought Alex was moving certain cards into certain parts of the deck. So they were like distributing lands and spells evenly by moving lands into the middle of clumps of spells. On a 10th watchback, I'm not actually sure if that is happening, but I do want to talk about that as a cheat that a lot of new players do. Someone I spoke to recently was doing that in a game against me until I explained that they shouldn't be doing that. The main cheat here from Alex though is that they are stacking their opening hand. They are shuffle cheating their way towards having a select seven and possibly the opening three or four draws as well by putting cards on the top of their library and then not shuffling them away. On the contrary, Julian on the other side is riffling and mass shuffling, not looking at the order of their cards in their deck. This is sufficient randomization for a game of cards. You're not meant to know the order of your cards. That's why you shuffle. Meanwhile, in the red corner, quite aptly, Alex decides to look at their deck throughout the shuffling process. Firstly, they appear to be moving cards to certain parts of their deck. 
perhaps mana weaving, perhaps going out of the way to make sure there's a good distribution of lands and spells as they go. This is a very minor thing that a lot of new players think is okay, but it's not. Mana weaving or any sort of redistribution of what's in your deck is bad because you are not randomizing your deck. You are knowingly, you are willingly doing something that isn't random and thus you're not shuffling enough. You're not randomizing. You are, in effect, cheating. I've wanted to be to do a whole video on mana weaving, but I'm going to tie it into this one. I'll unpack that more in the second part of this video. Let's go back to the more nefarious, the more purposeful cheat that Alex is doing to get ahead. The even grosser part of all this is that Alex is sculpting their hand. They're taking cards from their deck after looking at them and putting them at the top of the deck and then they're shuffling the deck in a way that never moves the top seven to ten cards from the top as they go. They are mashing the bottom part of their deck and keeping the top part the top part the same every single time. This is called shuffle cheating. I've done an entire video on this. I will link to my shuffle cheating video in the cards below where I even physically myself tried to do the on camera and I realize that it's hard to do initially but with practice I think it's probably quite easy. This allows them to sculpt the perfect hand for their game which is even funnier when we hear them discussing how they don't know what to do in this matchup and upon drawing their hand they, that they've perfectly sculpted through cheating they said in an attempt to bluff their opponent it might be fast enough. Yeah, it might be fast enough. Is that we know they aren't fully shuffling the deck. We see, if you watch, the top cards of the deck never move into the deck itself. They never get mashed back in. They are not randomly put into the deck. And the thing is, it's just so fucking blatant. It is wild that they're doing this with a camera overhead. Alex is literally looking at the cards in their deck, probably because they know people trust them and can take advantage of that fact, and that their opponent is distracted by their own sideboarding and shuffling. I was told on Twitter that Alex was a level 2 judge at one point in the local area, a mentor to their opponent Julian, who was a level 1 judge. So they were in a position of power that they knew gave them this air of trust. So if no one was paying enough attention, they could do whatever the fuck they want. To the point that they did it with a camera. I don't know what the numbers of viewers these streams get. Perhaps that's why they thought, ah, no one will notice, but someone did. And someone wrote into the content creator and the local community. And now Alex is facing a ban. Put the story to bed. What happened to Alex? The stream helped them get caught and they were DQ'd, banned from local shops. And the influence passed onto a level two judge, according to the person who was tweeting about this online. How do you stop someone from doing this against you? How do you stop someone that you trust from doing that? Well, hopefully the people you trust don't do this, but there are two clean ways to stop someone from being able to uh, shuffle and cheat you. I talked about this in a video before, but I'm going to say it again. The first is rather wishy-washy, but it's just pay attention. Talk to your opponent as you are shuffling and randomizing your deck. Look at them and make them look at you by engaging them in conversation and ensure that they aren't looking at the order of the cards in their hand. They shouldn't be doing that. If anything, it should be to the side as they look away, look at you, so they can't see how they're randomizing their deck. But secondarily and more importantly than the fluffy pay attention shit is that you should be shuffling your opponent's deck. Alex does the right thing here by asking their opponent if they would like to cut, at which point they say no. They trust Alex, so it doesn't happen. Would you like to cut? No, you're fine. And that seems to be a mistake. If the opponent had said, sure, I'll cut, and just, like, you know, move the top half of the deck off, the bottom half back on top, or the correct way to cut is to pick up the deck and do two quick mashes that move the bottom and middle of the cards all around so that it can't possibly be stacked against you. Cutting your opponent's deck seems like extra effort that I wouldn't go into if I was playing casual practice matches at my friend's house on a kitchen table but anything above that from fnm onwards i'm going to do it as a good habit of course hopefully people aren't cheating at fnm because who gives a shit at fnm but as we see some people will but it's a good habit to get into if you're planning to go to larger events or tournaments because it stops people from being able to do this in my shuffle cheating video to give away one of the big points is that shuffle cheating is actually more powerful when you do it to your opponent but you give them a bad hand a hand of all lands for example as we see in the examples in that video because then when you hand it back to your opponent during that cut they can't then cut it back again you have to stop cutting the deck at some point right that's where again the due diligence the paying attention to what your opponent's doing where they're looking that sort of thing this video is not a witch hunt and that's why i'm not digging for four names or sharing details beyond what we've done so far i'm super happy to hear the local community caught this person out and because they abused their trust they're now going to hopefully pay the price but let's talk quickly about this whole idea of mana. The reason I bring it up in this video is that when I saw this cheap video, a few people said to me that it looks like they're just mana weaving. They're just looking through the deck, finding lands that were happened to be played in the last match, 
and evenly pushing them into points in the deck between spells, evenly distributing mana and spells. This is often done by pile shuffling. Pile shuffling at events is often considered a way to break up those clumps of previously used spells and lands in your deck. The thing is, None of that is random. If you are doing this to try and remove an element of clumps or getting three or four lands in a row, that's no longer random. Three or four lands in a row is part of the randomness. I don't think Alex was mana weaving per se, or maybe they're doing it ritualistically when they were looking through their deck a little bit because they were mass shuffling most of the deck apart from the, the bit at the top. But I want to bring it up because people were saying that, oh, they're just mana weaving when mana weaving itself is still a cheat that casual and new players need to stop doing. Mana weaving and pile shuffling are kind of two of the same thing. In pile shuffling, you pile your cards out in the idea that those piles spread out clumps of things that happened in the previous game. And it also allows you to count your deck. If you are pile shuffling to count your deck, doing that once per round is probably a healthy habit to do to ensure you haven't dropped a card, misplaced a card, or just sideboarded incorrectly and you got the wrong number of cards in your deck. If you are doing it in some way to evenly distribute mana and spells, or like the mana cost of spells in other card games that aren't magic, then you aren't randomly randomizing your deck. You're doing the opposite of randomization. You're trying to layer your deck or stack your deck in some capacity. If you are literally trying to even dispute lands and spells, that is cheating. Tell this to your local playgroups. Bring it up at Commander Night. Don't be obnoxious about it, but bring it up because it is cheating. It's not sufficient randomization. I'll give you an anecdote of this as well. I was at the Battle Spirit Saga event for the release recently and I sat down in round four or five and my opponent and I both had a draw in the previous round and we were laughing and joking about some of the stuff our opponents were doing to waste time in the previous. For example, my opponent explained to me that their last round opponent was checking the graveyards over and over when they had nothing that interacted with the graveyards just to kill time to get a draw instead of losing their match. My opponent all the while whilst doing this as the clock had started was pile shuffling was putting the cards down the de deck like I've just been showing in this video clip. They were doing this, and I asked them, why are you doing that? I was expecting them to tell me they were just counting their deck, but they actually said to me they were trying to redistribute and evenly distribute things like Nexus and, and, and mana cost spells and stuff that might be clumped up from the previous round. And I explained that A, that's not randomization, that's stacking, and B, if you mash off and after this, you're undoing all of that work anyway. So you're essentially wasting time. You're wasting time whilst the clock is ticking down in an event where we are both conscious that people are going to draw a lot. And this blew my opponent's mind. In Magic, as far as I understand it, you can pile shuffle to count your deck. But if you pile shuffle more than once, you are wasting time. Because pile shuffling is no more efficient than mashing. If anything, it's less efficient and requires mashes to fully randomize. So stop fucking doing it. It's an okay ritual to casually do at the kitchen table, I guess. But ultimately, it is wasting time. And it's a cheat that you're probably doing that you didn't know. If you don't know the order of your cards as you pile shuffle, as you do the piles before you mash them up, then it's not really a cheat in that sense because you don't know what you're distributing as such. But if it's slower than just mashing the deck, there's no reason to actually do it. So I hope you found that interesting. Somebody cheating so blatantly on camera and so terribly and they got caught doing it. Karmic justice, baby. And also the whole making sure you're distributing your stuff evenly in your deck is fucking nonsense and you shouldn't be doing it. That's not randomization. People seem to think that when two songs come on Spotify in a row by the same artist, let's say, that the randomizer isn't working. When in reality, if it is truly random, that sort of thing can happen. That's what random means. Mash up for your decks, cut your opponent's decks, be good to one another, and I'll see you in the next video. Hit that subscribe button, you motherfuckers, and I'll see you soon. Ta-ta for now.